Hey guys, if you seen my video yesterday on electrical theory, there was a couple things that I definitely got wrong. And some people did reach out to correct me. Some of them eh, were a little iffy about it. And we did argue a little bit. And I was wrong about a couple things. And it was for the wrong reasons. All right. And let me go over that for you. So first off, I talked about a particular heater where I did see this problem when the voltage decreased, the current increased. The assumption out there is that the heater was just a resistive load heater, but it wasn't. It was a motorized water bath, which is very interesting, guys, because a resistive heater, the resistance doesn't change. That's right. I, 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 if I inferred that or if you guys got that out of what I was saying, that was definitely wrong. The resistance doesn't change. But in that particular situation, what nobody took into account was the motors. It had two agitator motors which constantly ran and it had a lift motor on top of that. And here's the thing about motors. Uh, I also, during this whole thing, not to get off a little of subject, but I said that resistance equals current. It, that is obviously wrong, uh, but I was thinking about something else when I said it, and what I wanted to say is that they're inversely proportional and that there's a direct relation between the two. So when I was saying that they equal, uh, what I was originally trying to say is that there's a direct relation between one and the other, and I had way too much stuff going on at the time and way too much caffeine. Uh, and it's a live stream. There's no editing. So once I say something, that's it. Like, <laughs> there's no pulling it back. So, guys, uh, there is an inversely proportional relationship between current and resistance. So if you decrease the resistance, you're going to increase the amount of current, which is actually how a rheostat works, if you think about it. A rheostat is uh, kind of like a, a divider. It's a variable resistor. And you're going to have a coil wire and you're going to have a wiper that goes across it. And what you're doing is you're increasing or decreasing the length of the resistor, which is going to increase or decrease the resistance in the circuit, which modifies the amount of current that comes out of a, a circuit. So you see these kind of rheostats in uh, AC power systems all the time. And uh, if you're going to control the speed of a motor, you will increase or decrease the resistance of the circuit, not the voltage of the circuit. And so that's how a rheostat works. And that is interesting because in this example that I gave of the heater, which was a motorized water bath, what I didn't consider is that the heating element was not the main factor. Now, heating elements are a huge current draw. Normally, a running motor generates a certain amount of EMF, and EMF kind of self-regulates the amount of current in um, a motor, all right? So you guys can read about this later, but EMF kind of self-regulates the amount of current. When you decrease the voltage in a motor, you are going to decrease the amount of EMF, which is going to increase the amount of current. So the motors get really hot, and they draw more current, more current through a um, small conductor is going to get it very warm and it's going to melt, which is what happened. I didn't explain it very well and I didn't get it right for the reasons why it happened. The inference out there was that the heating element just magically creates more resistance, which is not what happens. The other components in the circuit are going to... Um, the motors are going to create more current themselves because of how motors work with voltage. So there is an inverse proportional relationship between current and resistance in electrical circuits. Now I kind of got on this topic when I was talking about the DC motor and how I was going to hook it up to my DC power supply and decrease the resistance or decrease the amount of voltage. But what I was also saying at the time is in order for it to maintain the same RPM, it was going to have to double the amount of current. And that's just Ohm's law to begin with, all right? So 12 volts, 1,000 RPMs, or let's just say magically like 1,000 watts. In order for the work, the wattage to stay the same, 
you, you're going to have to double the amount of current. And I, I did state, state that there, which kind of shows you where my mind was thinking, is that in order for it to perform the same amount of work, it's going to have to double the amount of current if I half the amount of voltage. Um, I should have devoted an entire video just to Ohm's Law, uh, but that's the kind of boring stuff that you guys can get anywhere. I was trying to cover it rather quickly in an hour and a half because there was a lot of stuff to talk about. And in fact, it was all ad lib, completely unrehearsed. And I had way too much, uh, way too much caffeine that day. So I was just, I was keeping track of all the people in the room, plus the chat, plus the camera wasn't working right. And uh, there's a few things that I definitely I didn't get correct, but that's okay. Uh, because if you guys don't like what I got correct or what I didn't get right, um, please make your own videos. <laughs> and I say this, but you know, again and again, and people never do. I wonder why. Uh, but if if you think like you can do something better, then please, I highly encourage everybody to make videos because through our collectiveness, we can make this better for everybody. So yes, um, I did say some stuff wrong, and it. My reasoning wasn't completely right, and some things I just uh, was wrong about completely. <laughs> you know, I, and, and that was just the way it's going to work when it's ad lib and you are working under those circumstances. But uh, next time, I'm going to try and do better. That's all there is to it. I'm going to rehearse. I'm going to give myself a little more time, and I'm going to try and cover it a little more in depth. Covering Ohm's Law and electrical theory like that in an hour and a half is extremely difficult to do. <laughs> the chance of you covering that much material and getting something wrong is extremely high. So I apologize for the inaccuracies and that's why I made this video to try and clarify some things and get you guys the right information because I knew going into it that there was going to be uh, a lot of stuff that probably wasn't going to be right. And But the thing is, is by me putting it out there, somebody that does know what's right is going to comment. And I always encourage that as long as they're not being a dick. If you're starting to be a dick about it, I'm going to get rid of your comment because that's that's just not warranted. Now, if you made a follow-up video stating why something was wrong, that's encouraged. That's how we all learn. Just don't be a dick about it, all right? So anyway, guys, I encourage everybody to make videos. And if people are, are dicks in the comments, then that's why people don't make videos. It's just the way it is, right? And we try and encourage everybody to make videos. If something's wrong, then say something's wrong. That's fine. That's highly encouraged. In fact, make your own follow-up videos showing why it's wrong. And, and use physical examples. That's awesome. Now, when I give this course uh, formally, I have like actual examples of how every single thing is going to work. And I have physical examples of like taking a motor and getting it to do the same amount of work and you know the amperage increasing etc but that's basics ohm's law but having physical examples proves the point even better and it's much better than doing ad lib so guys i'm rambling on enough there was some things i just wanted to get out in the air because it wasn't exactly correct and uh now uh you know we're gonna press on next week is gonna be soldering hopefully i do better then huh <laughs>